Monsieur de Lafayette, you are safe and sound. Safe and sound indeed, but with a broken soul. I have just returned from Place Dauphine. I understand, Monsieur. The Guard National. I was too late. All these brave men cut down in a single attack. Why was I not among them? Alas, I am condemned to outlive them and to witness an even greater calamity. What disaster do you fear, Monsieur? It's a highly sensitive matter. I've been waiting in vain for a message of the utmost importance. Can you tell me more about it? Ma foi, at this point, I don't really have a choice. You can speak freely. Have no fear. Before the King's attack, I sent a squad of horsemen on a very important assignment. They were to collect a precious cargo at Gros Caillou, not far from the Hotel des Invalides. What sort of cargo? I'm sorry, Aegis, but I swore on my life to keep it a secret. All I can tell you is that it would give us a decisive advantage. But I haven't heard from my men. I'm worried that the exchange may have met with misfortune. It is paramount that I learn what happened and who has the cargo now. The future of the kingdom depends on it. Since it's so important, I will go there myself and attempt to solve this mystery. You're back. Do you bring me glad tidings? The abbot is safe and sound. He is at the Société des Amis des Noirs, with Monsieur Raymond and the Bishop of Nancy. Very well. Very well. May Providence allow them to reach us safely. Though I despise war, we must rally the people for battle as soon as possible. A reliable source tells me the arsenal at Les Invalides is overflowing with weapons, but a royal automat guards it. I now have no doubt that you are capable of defeating such a creature. But are you prepared to go back into the fray? Yes, I am. Very well. Try to clear the way so we can access the Hotel des Invalides. Once you've done that, we'll take care of the rest. A handful of patriots are already there. Their task was to open a passage to the east, through the Faubourg Saint-Germain. Very well. I will go and find them. Were you present when the Estates General was dissolved? Oui, madame. I had a front row seat. I witnessed what it cost to defy the crown. We laid bare before the king the abject misery of his subjects. It was more than he could suffer. So he had the people's representatives dispersed by means of bayonets. At least we only had to contend with soldiers made of flesh and blood. Positively angelic compared to the machines that have swept through Paris. Goodbye, Monsieur de Robespierre. Eh bien, Aegis, did you make sure my men managed to collect the cargo? No. I haven't gone there yet. Et alors? What are you waiting for? This is a matter of the utmost importance. The exchange was to take place near the Église du Gros Caillou, the town next to Les Invalides. There is no hope of reaching Les Invalides by the moat. I shall have to go round it through the Faubourg Saint-Germain. According to Monsieur de Robespierre, his men have cleared a path for me.
Soldier Robespierre's men. They perished in the line of duty.
after us. You must carry on, I beg you. I'll never make it. I'm out of breath. Paramo de Gia, Suzanne, just a bit more. We're almost there.
Ottomans ravaged the church and slaughtered the faithful.
back. It's going to be all right. This machine is alone and the door is barricaded. It won't hold. Did you see how easily those demons entered the church? Don't be afraid. I mean you no harm. Oh, Seigneur. He can speak. What? What do you want with us, Automat? What happened in this church? You should know. It was your kind that slaughtered these lambs. I don't think those who were able to escape stand much of a chance either. Where are the survivors? They're hiding in the catacombs behind the church. There's also the gentleman that the automats took alive. Where did they take the gentleman? We haven't the slightest idea. That's enough questions now. Leave us be, but do.
getting closer to Les Invalides. Here, I should be able to cross the moat easily.
was no longer sustainable, Your Majesty. Your mechanical revolution has changed the face of the kingdom, but the coffers are woefully empty. The debt, Monsieur Necker. This debt that you and your banking friends helped to create for your own benefit, and which is now forcing us to levy new taxes. Will my subjects be able to bear another tax? Yes, Your Majesty. As long as it is distributed fairly, the representatives of the nobility, the clergy, and the Third Estate must come to an agreement. That is why we have convened the Estates General. Tomorrow you are to preside over the opening ceremonies. Oh, your Estates General. Nothing good can come of it. You have roused the spirit of rebellion. All I hear about are their damned Cahiers de Doléances. My rightful enjoyment is being challenged. The streets of Versailles are teeming with loudmouth fanatics with sacrilegious thoughts. Tell me, Monsieur le Ministre, have you purposely set this army of the unwashed against me? Your Majesty, I have always been your most faithful servant. Beware, Necker. Beware. I have a surprise in store for anyone who dares attack my throne.
Suzanne. My dear Suzanne, take my hand, please. Don't let them take me away. No. No, oh, no, this, this has to stop. I don't want to be tormented anymore. That is not my intention. I have come to rescue you. Rescue me? But what on earth are you? It is of no importance. What did you see and hear before you regained consciousness? I had frightful visions, rageful wraiths filled with pain and sorrow. And it was cold enough to curdle the blood. Oh, it's impossible to describe. All the rage and anger. I was in another body, I think. So big, so powerful. And there was this commanding voice ordering me to spread terror and death. Did I really hear it? Or did I momentarily lose my mind? Who are you, monsieur? Don't you know? I'm Jacques Necker, Ministre des Finances. Well, I was before I was captured. But this situation suggests that the King has decided to dismiss me from his service. What does he accuse you of? My alleged connivance with the Third Estate, no doubt. And most of all, for having been the first to ask to convene the Estates General. How and when were you captured? When the machines attacked, my wife and I fled our home to hide not far from there, in the Église Sainte Marie. But we didn't stand a chance against the machines. They overran the nave, wantonly mowing down the faithful. My wife, my poor wife, she wasn't able to escape. I'm sadly convinced of this. As for me, my life was spared only so I could be tormented. What is the meaning of all this? What will you do now? There is no future for me in this kingdom. I need to find a safe place where I can prepare for my departure as soon as possible. I will take you to the Cordelier convent. You will be safe there. A la bonne heure, she's back. Aegis, what a joy and relief to see you again. Monsieur. Welcome to our stronghold. I'm sure that everyone here is aware of the great debt we all owe you. As you can see, the most exhausted among us are growing stronger. While the most determined are already planning our counterattack. I did not expect to see you all together. Four days ago. The representatives of the Third Estate gathered in a tennis court. They swore not to separate until they had established a constitution for the nation. But that was not the only oath we swore. All the honorable men who were at Versailles, representatives and patriots, members of the Club Breton, secretly swore to meet here if they were dispersed. You, Aegis, have allowed them to gather once again. Though unfortunately many are missing, we still have hope. Why did you choose to meet in this convent? It was my idea. Voyez-vous, I stay here whenever my obligations bring me to Paris. No other retreat inspires such peace and contemplation. Et puis, truth be told, this building has always felt like a fortress to me. Just look at how thick these walls are. For two whole days, the Patriots in the Quarter consolidated the outer walls to make it an impenetrable citadel. No automat has broken through our defenses yet. Where are the monks, mon père? They are secluded in their quarters, praying for the salvation of the people of Paris. However, we bear no illusions. We are weak, we are divided, and we are unarmed. Without you, without your warrior strength, we have no chance of turning things around. You are sent by heaven above, Aegis. From now on, you may consider the Cordelia convent your headquarters and a welcome refuge.
We must speak, you and I, in private, if you please. Monsieur de Lafayette must not hear a word of what I'm about to tell you. What do you mean? You all seem to be certain that I will use my strengths to serve your cause. Are you forgetting that I have a task to accomplish? Not at all, madame. We all know and support your plan to free Monsieur de Vaucanson. That is why I've taken the time to think of a way for you to get to the Bastille. I am listening. There is a patriot in Paris whose pamphlets have aroused Monsieur de Lafayette's ire. His anger is so strong that the poor man had to disappear to escape arrest. I know that he is secretly hiding in the quarries in Montmartre. A labyrinth he is said to know like the back of his hand. If anyone can help you navigate the obstacles that keep you from the Bastille, it is the elusive Monsieur Marat. Very well. I will go and find him. Monsieur Necker. I owe you my life, madame. So I am embarrassed to ask you for anything more. Do not fear. You have my full attention. Suzanne, my beloved wife. I cannot bring myself to accept her death. Despite all the evidence, I still hope to see her alive again. I need to be sure. Mon Dieu. What have I done to deserve such a fate? Why is the king sworn to destroy me? And all that I hold dear. After everything I've done for him. My abnegation. Why would the king owe you anything? I dedicated my life to the kingdom as his minister. On my life and my fortune as well. I refused to accept any remuneration for my services in order to keep the accounts balanced. And I personally filled the king's coffers with two and a half million livres from my own private accounts. Bonds in the Caisse des Comptes, which the king keeps in a tailor-made armoire de fer in the Palais des Tuileries. He stores all his secrets there. I'd wager there's enough in there to sully his reputation a hundred times over. You must retrieve these bonds post-haste, madame. They must not be used to allow this madman to build more murderous automats. Do I have any chance of opening it? Don't even think about it, madame. Despite your incredible strength, that safe is said to be impenetrable. It was designed precisely to that effect. I personally never had access to it. I suppose that its contents were too unofficial for the honest minister that I always was. Who has the key? The king does, that's for sure. Anyone else? How could I know? His shadow advisors, most likely. Now that I think about it, there's a rumor that has been going round Versailles for a while now. It's said that Monsieur de Mirabeau used to come and go as he pleased at the Tuileries. That he oversaw diplomatic missions for the Crown. Not in any official capacity, of course. Who knows? He might know more about this matter than I do. I will ask him. I will look into what happened to your wife. Bless you, madame. Where should I start my investigation? In the Faubourg Saint-Germain, east of Les Invalides. We were separated in the Église Sainte-Marie, on Rue de Bourgogne. I shall be off. You are the only hope of seeing my beloved wife again, and of foiling the plans of the clockwork tyrant. Monsieur de Mirabeau. Have your efforts paid off? Minister Necker claims that you are a familiar face at the Tuileries Palace. Well, that old story. Will it hound me until I have drawn my last breath? This, madame, is nothing but an unfounded rumor that I am trying in vain to dispel. To what do I owe the displeasure of having to defend myself once again? I must get hold of some documents that are kept in an armored safe in the King's chambers. What lock could resist your talents? Minister Necker said it was indestructible. Hmm. Oh, I see. Well, let me think. Who could help you? After all, a lock is nothing more than a simple mechanism. Nothing that can resist the expertise of our dear Monsieur Bailly. Why don't you ask him for help? I'll be sure to do so. 
Now, who else might be of use? Oh, there's Monsieur Lavoisier as well, our gunpowder commissioner. If he were here, I'm sure he'd have no trouble finding you something you could use to blow the door off that stubborn safe. Sadly, he's still at Luxembourg. Then it is high time you rescued him, madam. Now, if you'll forgive me, I have an urgent matter to attend to. You are forgiven for everything. In that case, it has been a pleasure, madam. Has anyone seen Monsieur de Mirabeau? Aegis, a word, s'il vous plaît. Monsieur Raymond. Aegis, we are very pleased to see you again. It was very unwise of us to leave the Société without such a capable bodyguard as yourself. It is a miracle that we got here safely. What do you want to talk to me about? Have you ever heard of the Club de Massiac, Aegis? No, Monsieur. It's an association that meets at the Hotel de Massiac, just west of Le Halle. It counts some of the wealthiest plantation owners in the Empire. Those from Saint-Domingue and the Petite Santé are most formidable adversaries. They are waging a war of influence to keep the slave trade going, and resort to the vilest methods to achieve their ends. They worship nothing but money, and their greed is matched only by their cruelty. Regrettably, my interests occasionally require me to suffer their company. Two months ago, I was in La Havre to settle some business with the Admiralty, when I overheard a conversation between two planters from Bastère. If they are to be believed, the Club de Massiac is plotting to create sleepless slaves, des esclaves sans sommeil. Those were their exact words. It's hard to say what this could possibly mean, but I fear they plan to administer some foul drug to their slaves to force them to toil day and night without rest. Our organization will not let these poor souls endure such a hell. Aegis, we must look into this. It is a matter of great urgency. You speak of greed, Monsieur Raymond. But could you enlighten us as to what makes you any different from the planters you condemn? What exactly do you accuse me of, Monsieur de Robespierre? S'il vous plaît, do tell. Do you not also exploit the labor of these poor souls yourself on your indigo plantation? I fight every minute of every day to improve their condition. No one would have the audacity to deny this. If that's the case, then why wait? Free them. You preach abolition, yet you continue to line your pockets at their expense. The truth is, you refuse to upend the established colonial order because your entire fortune depends on it. It's easy to criticize from atop Mount Olympus, Maximilian. You know nothing of the realities of Saint-Domingue. What would happen to all these people if I freed them tomorrow? Without an education, without a livelihood, I would be condemning them to the most abject misery. No, I must act with both compassion and realism. It is true that every reform must be approached with prudence. This reform is not so difficult. I've begun it myself at La Belle Gabrielle, my plantation in Guyane. There you will not find slaves, but workers who earn a weekly wage. And my plantation is no less profitable. Ah, yes, profit. Because that's the most important thing. Don't you see, the law of nature gives every man the right to cultivate his own land. Monsieur, calm yourselves. I implore you, now is no time to quarrel. What Monsieur Hamel has related to us is extremely worrying. We must find out more about this plot to create sleepless slaves as quickly as possible. Aegis, you are the only one who stands a chance of making it to the Hotel de Massiac alive. Monsieur Bailly. Ah. Oh. Mademoiselle, I am very pleased to find you here with us within the shelter of these walls. I'm looking for a way to force a lock that is supposed to be unbreakable. Monsieur de Mirabeau advised me to ask you for help. But I'm an astronomer, mon enfant, not a locksmith. I know my way around lenses, filters, racks and tripods. But I've never given a moment's thought to how a lock works. Monsieur de Mirabeau was joking with you, that's all. Où est-il, ce brave homme? So that we might ask him. He has left. A matter that could not wait. Excuse me? Do you mean he left the convent? 
That's madness. What was so important that he would put himself in such danger? Intriguing indeed. <laughs> 